Hello, I'm Dr. David Johnson, Professor of Medicine and Chief of Gastroenterology, Eastern Virginia Medical School in Norfolk, Virginia. Well, the most recent study from the New England Journal has captured a lot of highlights and headlines, emphasis on the effect of colonoscopy screening on risks of colorectal cancer and related death. And the, the news flash is maybe we don't do as well as we think we do with colonoscopy screening. Well, let's look at this in particular. This is a study from the Nordic study, and this is from the North European uh, Initiative on Colorectal Cancer, aka the Nordic uh, Consortium, but it was a prospective evaluation now, randomized study, looking at healthy men and women from countries of Norway, Poland, Sweden, and the Netherlands from 2009-2014, aged 55 to 64, and they were invited on a, on a one to two ratio to undergo colonoscopy or no screening, which was the usual care group. 84,500 participants uh, were ultimately invited from Poland, Norway, and Sweden, but they were the ultimate data analysis, uh, excluding the Netherlands, and I'll talk to that in a second. So 28,000 in the invited group, only 42% of whom underwent screening, and then 56,000 in the usual care group. The Netherlands were excluded because of some data accumulation some, some new laws in the Netherlands, but again, recognize that 10,000 plus patients were excluded. It's very interesting because the Netherlands is, by most recent 2022 analyses, the fourth leading cancer country as it relates to colon cancer, as it relates to particularly uh, the incidence of colon cancer. Nonetheless, a, a data-rich and, and seeded population more prone to colon cancer were excluded from this particular study. Whether or not that makes any difference, it just raises questions. So nonetheless, a one to two ratio, screening versus not screening. A couple overarching comments, and then I want to delve into the really the granularity of analysis of this particular study. So recognize 42% of the patients invited to colonoscopy ultimately went, underwent colonoscopy. Also, it's particularly notable that the screening study for colonoscopy, there was no difference as it relates to early versus later stages of cancer. In this case, they used Dukes A and B early, Dukes C and D later, and there was no difference as far as screening or not screening. This is entirely against all the data that we've seen in virtually all the trials of screening, and in particular uh, involving European studies as well, that there was no difference. What they found was an 18% risk reduction for patients that underwent colonoscopy and there was no difference as it relates to uh, for 18% for colonoscopy as it relates to colorectal cancer, no difference as it relates to colon cancer related death. When they did an adjustment for this 42% screening, the numbers went up to 30% for risk reduction for colonoscopy and colon cancer and 50% for related colorectal cancer related death, which is very much on par with what we've seen for the sigmoidoscopy trial, so left-sided screening only. And that particularly raises some questions also why there was no difference as far as the uh, incidence of early or late study stage cancer. So let's delve into why colonoscopy would not have made a difference in colorectal cancer detection or screening. There are three reasons. One is mislesions, two is incomplete polypectomy, and three is rapid development of cancers. We see that more with syndromic cancers. I'm gonna dismiss the latter and focus in particular on mislesions and to a lesser degree on incomplete polypectomy. And let's look at how this may apply to this analysis of this particular study. First of all, the mislesions. Well, we find that the individual endoscopic performance from the Nordic trial and previous publications has dif differed significantly from what we'd say is standard quality. Sequel intubation targets at 95% in European and both US standards and, and guidelines was met in prior Nordic studies as it relates to sequel intubation, missing that in 17.1%. Again, in screening trials, that's inordinately less uh, as far as the optimal screening and hence missed lesions. The second is adenoma detection. In this particular study, um, they used a threshold of 25% in the previous Nordic publications. 28.6% of endoscopists have not met that standard and, and rela relates to involvement of the senior investigator, Dr. Michael Kaminsky, in particular, recognizing that sets a standard for quality. And also in seminal work from Dr. Kaminsky, dating back to 2010, which again was uh, something that was re relative to the index study from the New England Journal, 
he highlighted in that study that quality matters. And in that point, in that study, using a threshold of 20% adenoma detection, those that were less than that, low adenoma detectors, the incremental risk for interval cancer was escalated by a factor of nearly 10 to 11 times greater that you had if you had an interval cancer, it was from a low level adenoma detector. So quality matters, and that discriminant was even on a threshold of 20% for the adenoma detection rate. This present study used 25%. Now, is that realistic? The current data suggests using the, the GI Quick data, which is the GI Quality Improvement Consortium, now, most recent data of 2.6 million colonoscopies, approximately 1,200 endoscopists, and we've seen a, a progressive rise in adenoma detection rate and screening. Now, in the present norm, the numbers are closer to 40%. So, recognizing that 40% may make a, a huge difference. If you go back and look at Dr. Doug Corley and the data from the 2014 study in the New England Journal, a 1% increment in, in the adenoma detection rate equated for a 3% increase in reduction for colorectal cancer, interval cancer, and a 5% risk reduction for colon cancer-related deaths. So quality matters. And again, seeding back to Dr. Kaminsky's seminal work from 2010, we know that makes a major difference. Well, why would the quality difference occur? Well, one of these may be related to how the colonoscopy was performed and who it was performed by. We do know that there is a reflective difference in performance of colonoscopy in, in the countries that were mentioned as it relates to sedation. And looking back at some of the Nordic trial data previously published, sedation was administered to only approximately 11% of patients in Norway 23% in Poland, 45% in Sweden, and 90% in the Netherlands. Remember, the Netherlands was excluded in this particular trial. But those of you that have done colonoscopy on a non-sedated patient recognize the comfort factor, not only for the patient, but for the nurses and as well as the, the performer of the procedure, that the, there is a lot more time allowed to acquiescence of paying attention. And, and in particular, Patients are saying, when are we going to be there? Are we done? Or you're taking a polyp out. Is that all that needs to be done? The nurses are looking at you. So the performance of procedures with sedation wasn't reported in this particular study, but it certainly raises a question in, in my mind. The next is, as it relates to the interval cancers, and in particular, what we're not told is right-sided versus left-sided cancer. Why would that be important? Well, right-sided cancers uh, would particularly raise the issue of sesalcerated lesions that were missed. And in particular, we do recognize that those are missed more commonly in the right colon and that adjunctive things such as a advanced imaging with high definition or advanced imaging techniques such as narrow band imaging may help recognize not only the polyp, but also the polyp related margins, which is really quintessential for the, section, the, the inspection prior to resection, which gets to the second point of inadequate polypectomy, and, and again, the interval cancer risk tied to inadequate polypectomy, which is something that we mentioned as the second point of challenge here. If you don't define the lesion well, then you can't resect it well. And again, the margins of these things would have been very helpful to discriminate in right-sided versus left-sided cancer, allow the analysis potentially to speculate about sesalcerated lesions in particular, and also then tie those discriminants of adenoma in the right colon, cess also later, serrated lesion in the right colon with also performance characteristics of the individual performer. So was it tied to a low level adenoma detector? We do know that the cess also rated lesion correlates, detection correlates with increased adenoma detection. So if we go to low level adenoma detection, the cess also rated lesions were less likely to be detected. And we recognize that again, a third of the interval cancers uh, does occur through the cess ulcerated pathway. And again, this is thought to be related to the protection of, of resection and adequacy of resection. So again, lack of definition, right-sided, left-sided, and the correlation with with the the individual performance of low-level adenoma detectors, again, implication for cess ulcerated lesion detection, raises a lot of questions in this particular study about the quality. And the other area that really was notable as a prep adequacy. So in this particular study, as they've done in the previous Nordic studies, they use the validation of PrEP be good or very good as their, their discriminant. 
Notably, 9% didn't meet those criteria, but when we looked at the multi-society task force and development of the guidelines several years ago, we used validated instruments such as the Boston Val Prep score or other validated instruments or the discriminant of adequate versus non-adequate. Here, the discriminant was based on clarification of ability to discrete the discrete uh, evidence of recognition of polyps that were six millimeters or greater. Again, not recognizing those as one and not resecting it adequately as the other, but that was not qualified in this particular study at all. And notably 9% of the patients that, that were in this study didn't meet these criteria, good or very good, and we provided no data about what happened to those patients. So again, inadequate uh, detection, prelude to inadequate colonoscopy, preparation, again, leads to interval cancers. So when we come back to this particular study, the instrument is not so much the question. We do know that getting the test done is the first step in colon cancer screening. However, we know well know now that getting the best test done with the best quality performance and the highest quality providers is really the key to optimizing the true value of colonoscopy for colon cancer prevention. So don't lose the element of the headline of this particular study with the granularity and the, the, the spectacles of quality. That drives this test, and we really need to optimize the quality to analyze the true characteristics of performance. So I'm Dr. David Johnson. Hope this answers questions for you and provides you the ability to converse not only with your patients or media that, that raise these questions going forward, but the perspectives of this really are important to understand the true value of quality colonoscopy.